Hey everyone! So this is video 4 in my trilogy of G-O-D or O-B-G-Y-N. And the reason I'm making another video is because shortly after I finished the last one, I found a study that was done analyzing an, uh, another metric of women's presence in the Bible. So I thought I'd make one more video where I sum up what I've done in my videos, where I offer some ideas of theme songs that perhaps encapsulate uh, Yahweh's attitude toward women in terms of their presence in the Bible. Then we'll look at the study and what it has to say and compare it against the population of women in terms of men and whether or not it's really just and fair. And then finally, I have a theme song that women should be singing to Yahweh. Let's get going. In my three videos, I focused on the interaction of women in the Bible with men and also with God, and what I found were the following. We saw in my video series that Adam gets more dialogue in the story of Genesis, just leading up to the fall and including the fall, than all the women characters do in the first five books of the Bible. When Yahweh does talk to women, he either has contempt for them, he corrects them, or he only deals with them in terms of their reproduction and their babies. And finally, when Yahweh performs a miracle, I can't find a single instance where Yahweh does a miracle for a woman that doesn't involve either her uterus or her offspring. Given this, I was thinking what could kind of summarize Yahweh's attitude toward women as we find evidence for in the Bible. And I have three options. Maybe you guys can think of some more. But here are my proposed three theme songs that represent what Yahweh has to say to women. Because of copyright and fair use, I don't want to use somebody else's clips, but apparently it's okay to do your own rendition of other people's music. So I'm going to do uh, the songs for you, and you guys can choose which one you like the best in terms of theme songs. Shut up, just shut up, shut up, shut up, just shut up, shut up. Don't speak, I know what you're thinking, and I don't need your reasons. Don't tell me cause it hurts. Move, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way, bitch, get out the way. Move, bitch. Get out the way! Get out the way, bitch! Get out the way! So in terms of the study that I found just after my series ended, it was one that looked at the percentage of spoken words that women have in the Bible. So we talked about the number of words, and before I give the, um, the numbers, I'm going to let you bet. So your options are, of all the spoken dialogue in the Bible, do women get, as a percentage, 5%? 3.2%, 1.1%, or 0.7%. Place your bets now. Reverend Lindsay Harden Freeman led a three-year study using the Bible's New Revised Standard Edition, or version, to count every single word spoken by females. Freeman was quoted in the article as saying, we were stunned nobody had done this before. Let's just think about that. It's 2015. She started the study three years ago, so 2012, 2011. The texts have been around since, well, I guess Paul's letters started in 50 CE, so almost 2,000 years. And in almost 2,000 years, it never occurred to any of the literate men in Christendom or anywhere else to look at the number of words spoken by women. Why? because they don't really pay attention to women in Christian theology, and women's roles and words aren't considered important in the theology. Freeman said, and she found, as I have, that there are books about women in the Bible, but she had not encountered a book that looked specifically at the words women spoke in the Bible. In terms of their findings, they found that women with the most spoken words in a single book those can be found in Judith, and women in that book speak 2,689 words. Mary, the mother of Jesus, although the most important woman in the New Testament, is only credited with 191 words. Of the approximate 1.1 million words that are in the Christian Bible, on the Hebrew and the Christian scriptures, women spoke a total of around 14,000 meaning that they get, they clocked in at 1.1%. So if you said 1.1%, you win. And she noted that 
We have, for whatever reason, overlooked the witness of women in the Bible for all these thousands of years and all the contributions they have made to the faith and to world history. Yeah, that's right. That's completely gone unnoticed until a woman noticed it and decided to do something about it. That's the problem with religious patriarchy. Women aren't given respect. Now let's just put this in perspective. If we look at the entire population, let's say it's remained relatively stable, and women are half the population, and men are half the population, then women's presence in the population looks like this. But when you look at the number of voices that women have, it looks like this. This is what discrimination looks like. This is what underrepresentation looks like. And this is the consequence of religious patriarchy. My question to Christians and anyone else who wants to listen would be, if the God you worship is for everyone, then why doesn't he really have anything to say to women? The Ten Commandments are addressed to men because men at that time were the only people who had legal status as persons in law. Why weren't women considered legal persons if your God is supposed to be all-knowing and all-powerful and all-loving? Also, since the Bible sets out a system of power based on uh, male authority grounded in nothing other than their biology, then if your God is so all-powerful and knowing and wise, where are some laws that reflect women's disadvantaged situation and gives them disproportionate protection under the law? Are there good reasons why women should not be considered legal persons in the eyes of Yahweh? What about specific laws that end the practice of having concubines, multiple wives, or having sex with your slaves? Where are laws about rape that don't shame and blame the victim? Where are laws against domestic violence and child abuse? Where are the laws that give women the right to own property, or to sue people in court, or to obtain a divorce? And where does it have anywhere in the Bible Yahweh acknowledging the life-threatening risk that childbirth posed to women? And where are any protections, special protections for pregnant women? Basically, women are unimportant in the Bible. You know, if you're positing a supposedly all-knowing and moral God, and that all-knowing and moral God can't even be bothered to interact with half the population or speak to its concerns, you really have to question what kind of God you're worshiping. Too many believers today are willing to ignore this kind of sexism or make excuses for it by saying things like, well, a rape victim wouldn't be able to get married, so this is a form of protection for her. Or ignoring the fact that sex with 12 and 13 year olds is something that would get you put in jail today, but they use moral relativism to say, oh, well, that was just how it was done in those days. If it was wrong, it was always wrong. Sex with a 13 year old girl was always wrong. There is still a lot of work to be done on religious patriarchy, uh, making it an issue that we confront theists with and ask them to do better than their biblical passages. One of the video series that I want to be working on over the summer is going to be called the long title, You Can Be a Christian and You Can Be a Feminist, but You Can't Be a Christian Feminist. It'll probably be shortened to You Can't Be a Christian Feminist. That's going to be a periodic series. And by periodic, I mean I'm going to make it when I have time. But what I really want to do is just point out all of the ways in which Christianity, in particular, is incompatible with egalitarianism. I'll be using feminist critiques on the biblical passages to show the way that women are marginalized, made invisible, and treated as less than full human beings. So about that theme song for women. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I also hope you enjoyed the G-O-D or O-B-G-Y-N series. And until next time, I've been Christy, you've been awesome, and I'll see you later. Bye.